Well, you have probably engaged in this action in the past. Uh, you will engage in this action maybe later today or even maybe tomorrow. Everybody around the dinner table takes a turn and expresses what they are thankful for. It seems like an easy question, but if you're like me, when it gets to your turn, you have no clue what to say. Uh, now, Michael and Karen this year, they got it easy. So, but the rest of us, it's a little more difficult. After all, you can't say the same thing as you said last year. That's just unacceptable. Uh, it has to appear as if you've given it some real thought uh, and some real meditation. Although, again, if you're like me, in reality, you had not thought about it at all until you are about one person away from having to say your answer. And so you go through all the list of the things that you find enjoyable, the happy experiences, uh, the one-time things that were great, but none of them seem to really plunge the depth of what it means to be thankful. Thankfulness seems a little bit deeper than any of those things. We get a hint of that in our gospel reading. Our gospel reading starts as just a, a regular healing story of ten lepers. Jesus heals ten lepers. But in the midst of this story, we have uh, a deep dynamic of what thankfulness is, is really about. We hear of how Jesus heals the ten, but then one comes back, praises God, and thanks Jesus. And so in this action, we see that true thankfulness involves three things. It involves recognizing God's activity in our life, involves humbly placing ourselves before God, and then rendering our acts of thanks and praise. As I said, this gospel reading starts as a story of a healing of ten lepers. It begins kind of like every other healing story out there. Jesus comes across people in need, and he responds. This time, however, it's not just one person, it's community. In Jesus' time, to be physically sick uh, amounted also to spiritual uncleanliness. It meant that you were somehow spiritually off, spiritually sick, as well as as uh, physically sick. Leprosy, which was a term that covered a variety of different skin diseases, was like the worst thing that you could have. And particularly because if you had leprosy, it meant that you were completely cut off from everybody else. You weren't allowed to live in the city. You weren't allowed to work. You had to exist outside the city walls. The only thing you could do was possibly beg. If anybody came near you, you had to start screaming, unclean, 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 so that everybody knew that they had to keep their distance away from you. So everybody kind of stayed away. We hear how Jesus is walking between two areas, and he comes across these, these lepers, these, this community of, of lepers. You know, they're existing in no man's land. And so they cry to Jesus, but they still stay at a distance. Jesus demands that they go show themselves to the priest because that's what they needed to do. In order, in that time, it was only a priest who could declare you healed and well and whole. So in order to be restored back into the community, back into regular life, back to their family and friends, they had to go to the priest and have the priest declare them okay. This is where the healing story changes into one about deep thankfulness. Verse 15. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back. Now all ten were healed. All ten are going on their way. They've all stepped forward in some sense of faith, and they began the trek into the city to have the priest declare them healed. They probably all marveled at the healing as it occurred. Uh, they probably were all overjoyed as their skin uh, became whole and became healthy again. Yet one saw things at a different light. He saw that his life had been touched by the love and mercy of God. He recognized that Jesus had acted in a profound manner. The first step in thanksgiving, in true thanksgiving, is recognizing God's actions in our life. The way the gospel presents this event the other nine are not thankful. Relieved, absolutely. 
Overjoyed, no doubt. Probably very ecstatic. But not thankful. Because they don't recognize what God has done. One commentary went so far as to suggest that instead of phrases like, thanks be to God, the other nine were probably thinking, well, that worked, didn't it? Or, it's about time. Right? But not an act of praise. Whenever I think about thankfulness, I love uh, to quote Bart Simpson from uh, the beloved show, The Simpsons. Bart is asked to say grace over the meal, and Bart says, Dear God, we paid for this with our own money, so thanks for nothing. See, and, but I think that's a profound, profound statement of how so often we think about thankfulness. When we render our thanksgiving, do we just think about the realms of what we have done? The stuff that we have done for ourselves, the stuff that we have accomplished, the things that we could have done, do we fail to see, rather, what God has done, to see what God provides? What are some of the actions of God in your life? What has God done in you? What has God done for you? Because it's there. God is all around us. God is with us. Again, Mike and Karen have a really easy answer. And part of what they did here today was acknowledge that. Acknowledge God's role in blessing their family with Tristan. But it's not just the grand things of babies and miracles that we think about. God is involved with all of us. Like the leper, God works in our lives to give us life and to sustain our life. What has God done in you? What has been life-giving for you, which God has brought about? What strength has God provided? Even in the midst of horribleness and stress and struggles, what strength has God provided? What healing has God offered? In what situation, through which person, what was the time where you felt the presence of God most tangible. Thanksgiving starts with acknowledging the activity of God. The leper does that. He acknowledges that God had done something. So he turns around and he comes back. Verse 16, the leper threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. A more important than seeing the priest and being declared healthy and whole was the act of placing himself before the one who healed him. It's an act of adoration. It's an act of devotion. There is humility and there is a sense of self-offering there. The leper recognizes what Jesus has done. And because of that, he draws closer to Jesus. If you think about it, thanksgiving, true thanksgiving, is a relational concept. It draws in another person. For example... When is the last time that you have thanked yourself? Do we ever do that? Do you ever thank yourself? Have you ever been inspired to sing the song, Now thank me all myself, with hearts and hands and voices. What wondrous things I've done, in whom myself rejoices. Sounds kind of egotistical, doesn't it? We may like ourselves, we may be happy with ourselves, we may be glad over what we have done, and we are called to do that. But we don't ever thank ourselves. Why? Because thanksgiving is relational in nature. Even at the most elementary level, where we teach kids to say things like please and thank you, we do so out of a sense that such actions further relationships. You're accepting, you're honoring, you're appreciating, you're valuing the offering of somebody else, and in thanksgiving, we offer ourselves, in some sense, in return. It bolsters relationship. So in thanksgiving, we place ourselves before God, and we offer ourselves. We open ourselves to dwell in the presence of the one who has blessed us, and we offer our devotion, our thanks, and our praise. Right? That's the last part of Thanksgiving. We actually have to thank. 
and we have to actually render our praise. We acknowledge what God has done in our life, we place ourselves before God, and then we render praise and thanksgiving. The leper returns to Jesus, praising God in a loud voice. He throws himself at Jesus' feet and thanks him. He doesn't say, that was great. He doesn't say, I feel wonderful. He doesn't say, that was enjoyable. He says, thank you, God. Interestingly, uh, in, the, in the Greek, the word uh, for thanked, when he says, and he thanked Jesus, the word is eucharisto. It's the word eucharist. He goes to Jesus, places himself before him, and makes eucharist. You know, later on, we're going to do that. Right? It's a wonderful model of what we're doing. When we kneel down on the altar rail, we acknowledge what God has done for us in the person of Jesus through the sacrifice of the cross. We place ourselves before him. And we receive what he has offered. And in praise and in thankfulness, we offer our praise and we offer him ourselves as well. The leper's focus, the leper's direction are to the praise of the one who has blessed him and have given him life and healing. True thanksgiving is about having our hearts and our minds drawn deeper to the love of God. When we give thanks for something, when we give thanks for a job or for a baby or for a spouse or for a vacation, we recognize, not that they're just great, but we recognize how God has acted in that person or in that situation to draw us closer to himself. Jesus responds to the Samaritan that his faith has made him well. Jesus isn't talking about physical healing because all ten were healed. Jesus is speaking about kind of an inner wholeness, an inner put-togetherness, an inner restoration of life whereby the man is found to live in the context of the blessing of God. He goes forward in a renewed relationship with God. Jesus tells the man to rise and go. In some sense, his thanksgiving is not just an act. It's a state of life. It's not just a one-time action. He is called to go and live his life in the continual state of thanksgiving, whereby he is called to be constantly aware of God's activity and thereby constantly placing himself before God in praise, in devotion, and in thanks. This passage is a wonderful picture for us this weekend as we celebrate our Thanksgiving dinners, as we gather today or tomorrow with family and friends, and shows us what we need to be thinking about when we are asked that pesky little question, what are you thankful for? Maybe think about that. You know, from the time between now to when you start carving the turkey, think about what are you thankful for? Because that question is a lot more complicated than it sounds. And it runs to the very core of our relationship with God and how we see God's activity in our lives. May all of our celebrations over the next couple days not just be about turkeys and stuffing, but maybe about a time where we acknowledge God's powerful presence. And when we, ask, when we answer that question, when we sit around that table and the question comes to us, may we acknowledge that in that place, we're not just sitting with families and friends, but we're sitting before our Lord and our Maker who has blessed us, who has forgiven us, who has healed us, and who has done amazing things for us. Let's acknowledge his presence around that table. And so when we answer, this is what I'm thankful for, let not it be just a simple statement off our tongues, but let it be an expression of heartfelt devotion to God and an act of praise.